Uh, so Pax Perfiriana, a um, uh, bit of a discussion on what you're trying to do from the other end of the game. Um, there's a number of actions you take in each of your turns, uh, but you need to put them together in, in order to um, come up with a victory. So I'm going to start with what are you trying to achieve uh, in at the end of the game and uh, that may allow you to make some better decisions of uh, what you're trying to do in the early game and the mid game. So uh, the game has um, four regimes uh, that are played in. That's um, Pax Perferiana itself, um, US Intervention, uh, Martial Law and Anarchy. And now you can uh, bring yourself to a victory in any one of those regimes depending on what prestige points uh, that you've accumulated at the time that the victory check happens. Uh, the deck is seeded with four topple cards. These topple cards are the marker to say that you can try and pull a victory uh, off. Uh, depending on the regime will depend will dictate the prestige points uh, that you need to have a majority of or a greater number than your opponents each regime has a different prestige point uh, allocated to it so in Pax Perferiana you're trying to maximize the number of loyalty prestige points uh, that you have in your tableau. Uh, for US intervention uh, you're accumulating outrage points, prestige points. Uh, for uh, the anarchy regime you're collecting revolution prestige points and for martial law you're accumulating command prestige points. Now the trick of the game is to accumulate these prestige points across all four regimes in order that you're prepared uh, for when the regime change to be able to vie for uh, a victory. Or alternately you're accumulating prestige points so that you can thwart another player's attempt to claim victory with their prestige points. The game has a balancing mechanism um, through uh, the representation of the current ruler of this area of Mexico being Porfiri Diaz. Uh, Diaz has held sway in Mexico for at least 30 years and many factions within the community are keen on toppling him and establishing themselves as the next dictator uh, for Mexico and this region of northern Mexico close to the US border. Uh, this is the first regime card that the game starts with, Pax Porfiriana. You can see that on the card in the middle it describes the income cubes that a mine enterprise will give being two and that a bank enterprise or an economy enterprise will give three gold per turn uh, to uh, the player. And the advantage of the Pax Porfiriana regime is that if you have a loyalty point, prestige point on display in your tableau, you will, always, you will also place a prestige cube on that uh, loyalty point which is in effect another income. An example of a card that has a loyalty point on it is uh, the University of Arizona. It shows uh, that the loyalty point in the top right hand corner with a green outline indicated by the loyalty would have an income cube placed on that. And for an example, there is a player, the blue player, has got a 
income cube on its loyalty and that would give uh, that player an additional gold for that turn. And you can also note that the top left hand corner indicates that the University of Arizona itself would generate an income cube each turn. That card in Pax Porfiriana regime would earn two income for that player. If the regime was in any other regime other than Pax Porfiriana, that cube would not be there and the card would earn the player one gold per turn. This card is another one of the regime cards. This has been US intervention and you can see the income is reversed. So mines under the US intervention regime would earn three gold per turn for the player. Uh, whereas a bank or an economy uh, enterprise would only earn the player two. So the swap from Pax Porfiriana to a US intervention is a swap over in the income generated by those respective uh, enterprises. And the advantage in the US intervention regime is noted at the bottom is that US troops have jurisdiction in any district and without that being in play a troop card needs to be placed either to extort or protect your own enterprises uh, with the district of the enterprise itself. There are a number of cards in the market which when bought and played can change the regime. This allows you to manipulate the regimes and manoeuvre the regime to be your strong or strongest prestige point suit when an appropriate topple card gets placed into the market. The topple card acts in the same way as all market cards and will enter the game in the 16 gold location so it will first come onto the market in the most expensive slot but you and your opponent will have the ability to manoeuvre the market in order to make that topple card less expensive. There's a balance there in allowing the topple card to move down to a location where you can afford it by buying market cards in a lower cost column or leaving it high if you are trying to prevent your opponent from being able to afford the top of the card. The hand that you have that can be played open or closed, if you're playing with closed hands, then you have some ability to bluff your opponent in terms of what cards you might hold that could change the regime at some point in the future. Whereas with, if you play with open hands, that bluff mechanism is obviously not there and you can have a more aggressive game by knowing who's got more cards in their hands and make a better prediction of when they might want to play those cards that may change the regime to a regime in which they have a significant advantage in the prestige points associated with that regime. Uh, so what does a topple card look like? Uh, they're in this bright yellow colour. Uh, they have a, a headline uh, drawn historically from the time and they indicate that the topple in this particular case uh, says if the regime is anarchy presently then the, vi the prestige point used for victory being revolution is one lower than uh, at other times. In a two-player game 
therefore to win by Diaz revolution uh, Diaz is not worth three with his VP he's only worth two by himself the other another topple card is Presidente Diaz is shot uh, martial law is in play that's the regime and uh, command prestige points needed or that Diaz has is also reduced by one uh, this card shows the uh, if the regime is US intervention then Diaz's outrage would be reduced by one and finally Uh, the fourth of the topples is where the regime is Pax Porfiriana and the loyalty that is shown to Diaz is also reduced by one. So as I said there's a, a topple card bias to one to each one of the regimes that could be in play. So those are the cards that will trigger the possibility of a victory for uh, a player. During play, the critical understanding is that every topple card allows all players to seek a victory. But until the topple card is in play, you're manipulating either your tableau or another opponent's tableau in order to either maximise prestige points or minimise prestige points for another player. An analysis of the market and the cards that are available is required to understand what prestige points can be obtained by any of the players in the game. Each of the cards that have a prestige point will have an icon indicated and the name of its prestige point. Not all cards will have this. In order to obtain those cards you have to be able to buy them and purchasing cards in the market as the market changes potentially every player turn means you have to have the income and, and economic income in order to buy those cards off of the market and so early in the game the requirement is that you build an engine of income in order that you could perhaps you can perhaps purchase the cards off the market at a higher cost than others but i.e. earlier. The alternate technique is to buy and sell those cards with a prestige point that you may not be seeking to collect yourself but you know that another player is or is likely to seek those cards to be played into their tableau. Uh, the actions that may be carried out in a turn, uh, it states there you're able to carry out three actions per turn but only two if your Hacendado is jailed and the selection that you can make your actions from are to play a card from your hand, to buy a market card, to buy and play a public card, to sell a hand or a tableau card, to redeploy troops, buy land, upgrade a connection, police and speculate. And they will be described on another tape. Uh, the reverse of this card is the sequence of play. Uh, and you can see for each person they will do up to three actions. Uh, any headline cards in the final market column are discarded. The market itself is restored and then you take your income. And then if a topple is purchased and played, we then go through those steps. And depending on the number of players in the game, there are subtle changes to uh, how uh, the value associated with uh, Senor Diaz is uh, calculated in a two-player game. Uh, Diaz is worth two prestige points of whatever regime is currently active 
plus he has a vice president giving him another point. So he starts with three points on each topple uh, victory condition check. Your opponent can add to Diaz's points total and therefore, for example, in Pax Perfiriana regime, the players are counting their loyalty prestige points. Diaz will start with three and your opponent, should he have any loyalty, opponent, loyalty prestige points, can add to Diaz. For instance, if they had one loyalty prestige point visible on their tableau, Diaz would be uh, worth four and therefore you as the player would need to have five prestige points available in pre in your tableau in order to, during the topple analysis, get victory of the game. Likewise if your opponent had two loyalty prestige points now you need six in your tableau. So the collection of prestige points is not only an aim for you to gain victory by having more than Diaz and your opponent, it is also a mechanism to make it harder for your opponent to, to gain victory in that prestige, in that regime stop. There are also cards in the deck that come out through the market which you can buy and play into your tableau, which you can play in a topple event to make as stronger. Often the card played will need to be discarded but it may be the difference between another player achieving victory and you thwarting their attempt to do so, extending the game on to the next topple in order that you may be able to manipulate the regime and your tableau into a victory winning position. There are also two public cards that sit outside the market which being expensive at 16 gold or 18 gold may not come into play until the mid game. But the purchase of those cards is usually to gain a prestige point in revolution or outrage. Uh, but each card has a reverse side which allows a command prestige point to be gained and given that command prestige points are probably the rarest in the play deck those two cards may be significant if you're trying to win through command prestige points being the martial law regime. So how do you string this all together? For completeness, this is uh, the blue public card, which is Teddy Roosevelt, which uh, if bought will give a prestige point in Outrage, or it can be flipped over and give a prestige point in Command. The Catholic Church is the red public card, which can give a prestige point in Revolution. or in uh, command. These decisions would be made as you're getting towards the middle to the end of the game in order to boost uh, your tableau in a prestige point area you're seeking uh, to hopefully win with. And finally the, car, the game gives you each of the topple cards can lead to a victory for a player and therefore the game requires that you are assessing the number of prestige points in each player's tableau cons constantly and, of, and making note of the cards that are in the market that can change the regime either to uh, a regime that is uh, someone's desired victory point or away from such. Each of the four topple cards are respectively spaced uh, through the lower two-thirds of the draw deck. 
but an aggressive player can win on the first topple card as well as winning on the second, third and fourth topple cards. Each topple card itself has a slight bias in making a specific regime victory easier by way of reducing the number of points that Diaz has in a particular regime by one. Each topple card is associated with one of the regimes and therefore when a topple card comes out it will make a particular regime one point lower which may be significant uh, in terms of the amount of prestige points held by a player or by the opponents. There are a number of techniques that can be used to generate income. The most obvious and initially the only mechanism used is to buy enterprises. And the enterprises themselves are located in one of three regions that the game represents. The southern Texas Californian border area of the New S of United States. The Chihuahuan province of northern Mexico which is adjacent to the Sonoran province of northern Mexico. These three regions are fundamentally the locations of the enterprises that come into the game. There are several types of enterprises that come into the game and each one will give a different income stream to the player. And some enterprises income will vary depending on the regime that's currently in play. For example, in Pax Perferiana, banks and mines are the most efficient enterprises. But if the regime changes to anarchy or martial law, the income that's drawn from those enterprises is limited. Whereas enterprises such as, as ranches and reservations and gun stores have static income levels which are often not affected by the regime change. In addition each enterprise has a default type of connection or access to a marketplace there being three at least three that are key to the game. There is a mechanism whereby customers and goods uh, transport themselves on foot to the enterprise or from the enterprise. Then there are those locations that take advantage of mules, donkeys and animal drawn transportation. And then the most efficient is the railroad or sometimes a ferry or river uh, river access. These connections allow, these upgrades allow another income cube uh, to be placed on the enterprise. That connection can be built by another player and therefore the player that builds a connection draws an income from the enterprise that's in another player's tableau. And without going into too much detail you can use troops in the appropriate jurisdiction that can extort income from an opponent's card. So the growth of your tableau with enterprises, connections and extorting troops allows you to build an engine that generates high levels of income each turn. This income that you draw then allows you to purchase deeper into the market and therefore that may give you an advantage in buying some of the cards that may be desired by many players at an earlier point in the game than those others. So fundamentally the engine you build in terms of generation of income 
allows you more flexibility in purchasing appropriate cards from the market in order to be in a better position to take advantage of a topple card or to be in a better position to thwart another player's use of a topple card. So each player and the game can play up to six players uh, takes on the personality of one of six Hacendados available in the game. A Hacendado being a uh, significant person in either the regions of Mexico or uh, America uh, and who would seek to replace uh, Diaz when he's toppled. Each Hacendado has a bias in terms of which prestige point is going to be he's going to be stronger or she's going to be stronger in here we have Bernardo Reyes he's uh, has an advantage if uh, he's collecting loyalty prestige points or command prestige points and he also has a uh, an advantage uh, in terms of gameplay in this uh, this particular character is able to buy troops from the market at half price rounded up so a, car, a market card, a troop market card costing one on the market still costs one, it's halved rounded up. Uh, this is another Hacendado, Don Luis Terrazes. He has an advantage in loyalty and command and he's able to buy land in Chihuahua districts by expending one action instead of two. Francesco Madero has an advantage in revolution and outrage prestige points and is able to buy partners from the market at half cost rounded up. Uh, this being the American uh, boss Shepard um, has an advantage in command and outrage uh, and starts with an additional three gold. Pascual Orozco, Revolution and Command, has uh, the ability to buy orange cards from the market at half price, rounded up. And then finally, the last character is Venustiano Carranza. He has an advantage in loyalty and revolution points, and his advantage uh, in the game is to be able to buy black cards from the market for zero cold. Each of the Hacendados that we've described begin the game with the ability to earn two gold per turn, which is indicated by the two cube representations on the card. That would be your uh, initial engine to gain gold from which you can then leverage by buying enterprises as described previously. The Hacendado itself himself uh, in order to take advantage of his loyalty or revolution points at the time of topple will have to disclose and decide whether they're going to flip the card when you flip the card you can see that there has two sides to it um, that correspond with the two word the two words for prestige points on the other side so the person making that commitment will either make a commitment to the loyalty side once the decision has been made the card cannot be flipped back and on this card the Hacendado does not earn any income so this decision which is not reversible may have an impact on the income generated by the Hacendado stock uh, the third of the regimes uh, is the martial law regime in which mines and economy are both worth two income to a player 
and the special condition here is that a police action costs zero gold. Uh, police actions are used to remove unrest or get your player card out of jail. And the final regime card uh, is the anarchy regime. Uh, this reduces the economy from mines and banks down to one per turn, uh, but the anarchy allows all troops to have jurisdiction in any district. So this would allow Mexican troops to protect or extort American enterprises uh, and that Chihuahuan troops uh, and Sonoran troops could uh, cut across the border and have an influence on enterprises in the uh, adjacent uh, province. Uh, for example this is an enterprise card, a ranch uh, called Hacienda, Hacienda de Bastillos. It will have a start income of one cube being one gold per turn. But you can see the flag in the lower right indicates that this ranch is located in the Chihuahuan area of Mexico and in order to protect if it was your enterprise or extort if this was an enterprise of an opponent the troop card also would need to show uh, the Chihuahuan flag as you can see in the top right so this card could be used as a troop it's called federal troops at the top and represents the Krupp railway gun could be used to protect the ranch we just saw if it was in your tableau or used to extort from the uh, ranch if it was uh, in an opponent's uh, tableau. Uh, so back to the US inter intervention if a player had a US troop they would not be limited to protecting USA enterprises they could be used to have uh, protected or extorted the Chihuahuan uh, enterprise we just saw. Uh, 